What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. Today we're doing something a little different. We're going to answer some questions from you guys, my subscribers. So first of all, I want to put a big shout out to you guys. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for being here. I can't do this without you guys. Your interaction means a lot to me. And frankly, I get so much interaction that I sometimes don't get back to you guys. So today we're going to answer some unanswered questions uh, that have been found in the comments. I did a search through YouTube and I was able to find a lot of comments that I previously hadn't responded to. So today it's all about you guys. So first I want to start off with a comment from King of the Crease. King of the Crease asked, no fluke meter. Well, you caught me at a great time because I was out in the shop and I grabbed one of my pro uh, Craftsman Professional meters and I didn't grab my nice trusty fluke meter. So I've got the tools, um, I've got all kinds of brands. Yeah, no fluke meter in that uh, video, but nonetheless, I make up for it right now. You see the fluke meter. So next one up is from K King of the Crease again. Uh, he said, mink oil, I've never heard of it. So on the boot video where I applied some mink oil, mink oil is derived from uh, mink pelts in the uh, fur industry and it's used for conditioning leather and um, kind of like a saddle soap. So I used to use saddle soap on my boots and I just uh, ended up discarding that process altogether and went with mink oil. Now. Uh, in a next comment, we'll talk about another option that I haven't tried yet, but uh, mink oil is one of those things that has always been my go-to. There are many different companies that make, make the mink oil. I'm pretty sure it's kind of one of those white branded products where, uh, you know, it, it's pretty much the same. Uh, everybody has their own little twist on it, but nonetheless, it's still mink oil in the end. The next comment is from Nando4755. He said, spark plugs are pre-gapped and there's 14 millimeter sockets everywhere. So first, I this comment stuck out to me because spark plugs are not pre-gapped. They have a set pre-gap from the factory, but it's always imperative that you check every spark plug when it comes out of the box. So there are those little cartons or those little sleeves that slip around the bottom of the spark plug to make sure that in shipping it doesn't get messed up but always 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 check the gaps on your spark plugs don't put them in until you have properly gapped them to the specified uh, gap dimensions in your either in your owner's manual or in your shop manual just my two cents on that so bb kind said why can't you just pick up with your lawnmower with a bag collection system so this was on my dethatching video that was about uh, a month ago where i dethatched the lawn and then i had a bunch of stuff that i had to hand rake up so i do not have a bag collection system on my zero turn or have that capability at this moment so I did not use a bag collection system. So of course, if you don't have the tools to do the job right, well, you might just have to put in a little bit more elbow grease. Now this next comment is from Joe, Joe Simple username here. He said, you cost me $160, just ordered the 100 foot 10 gauge three conductor version of the same cord style you have. It's cool you have printing done for free, North Lansing against the world, thanks. So uh, this was a comment left on the Badass Extension Cords video. Uh, it was a very cool cord and I really, really enjoy it. I think Joe thought about the same thing and that's why he ordered a cord for himself. So I really enjoy the cord, I still use it all the time. It's showing very little wear and tear and I love the cord. Did I mention that I love the cord? So the next up is Adam Cruz. I'm sure some catch what, or I'm sure some catch what is not implied here. Rotating your boots helps cut back on foot fungus, which causes smelly boots. So I pretty much botched that whole comment, but yes, rotating your boots definitely keeps them from, you know, uh, uh, basically just pile it up with your foot goo and all the crap and sweat that you sweat into your boots. So he is absolutely right. Rotating your boots and wearing different sets of boots each day will keep you from getting that wet boot or, you know, that gangrene or trench foot, as some people call it, that just utterly trash boots. So I always keep boots in a good rotation 
to allow them to dry out properly and for any fungi that are in your boot to dry out and die. So thanks for the, for the comment, Adam Cruz. So next up is GeoPen. He said, have you ever done a radiator flush on your 205 bins? Thanks, Mr. Durbin. Well, thank you for the comment, Geo. Uh, I do not believe in radiator flushes and stuff like brake flushes. I think it is all snake oil. So if you've ever had a car that's over 300 and 400,000 miles. Um, I've never seen coolant break down to a point where it becomes unusable. So the fact that Mercedes-Benz wants you to do a radiator flush every 40 to 80,000 miles or something like that is absolutely insane that they want you to spend the money on uh, just literally taking the coolant out and putting new coolant in. Well, that coolant hasn't been around long enough to degrade to the point where it's not usable or not doing its job. So, you know, I think that that is definitely something that is snake oil that they're getting your money for. So stuff, uh, I even saw a recent comment about somebody saying that Mercedes-Benz dealership was going to charge them to depressurize the fuel system. So like that is a simple task that does not create any kind of, uh, Man, depressurizing the fuel system. That's a new one. So I just don't have any words for it. If you guys are noticing the flies, um, it was like the World Series around here right before I started the video. I was trying to kill as many flies in the garage as I could, but they're still flying all over the place. So let's see here. Sniper Logic says, I think washing machines do their sh fair share of wear on a pair of pants. And that is absolutely true. I mean, the washing machine beats the crap out of your clothes in order to clean them. And it does create a lot of abrasion that wears on a lot of pants. So you can say that, you know, it's probably 50% your washing machine and 50% you wearing the pants every day that wears them out. So those seams and those wear areas that are already getting to be a little thin from you wearing them, your washing machine just does the rest of the deed and uh, pretty much wears them out for you. So I totally agree, Sniper Logic. You are correct. So always up too late. You've seen always up too late on the channel. Um, he's a big part of the channel. He's a good dude, lives close by. Uh, and we met on YouTube. He says, I just realized how much I needed angled side cuts. Those are awesome. So angled side cuts are definitely something that uh, you, you need to add to your arsenal regardless of who you are. I think the straight side cuts offer a, a, a uh, you know, they're for a certain thing, but I think the angled side cuts really allow you some more leverage and those higher leverage uh, side cuts or diagonal cutters um, are definitely a nice addition to any toolbox. All right, Austin Lee says, you must have been a maintenance tech or MT tech. So he must have been a maintenance tech PMs and he laughs. So yes, I was absolutely a maintenance tech um, before uh, you know, getting out of the Marine Corps, I was a aviation mechanic or aviation electrician to be specific. And yes, I all, I am all about my preventative maintenance. So Austin Lee, you are correct. I was a maintenance tech and that is where I get some of my, uh, you know, my OCD and doing all the things ahead of time. Preventative maintenance is the key. All right. Steven Miller put this video on the Milwaukee socket set video and he said where are these tools made so there is a lot of confusion and a lot of stuff when it comes to milwaukee but milwaukee is a subsidiary of tti or i think it stands for tectonic something tectonic industries i think uh, tti is the parent company and they own a whole list of other companies um, that are basically you know all underneath the parent company so the headquarters for Milwaukee is here in the United States and they have some manufacturing here in the United States in a couple different states, but some of their tools are still made overseas in Europe and in China and things like this. So just because the company is US based doesn't mean that their tools don't come from overseas. Now, to answer your specific question about where the socket set was made, there is no country of origin on the socket set, so I cannot tell you for sure, but I assume from other people's comments and assumptions that it was made overseas. 
So Steely or Styly F is a longtime subscriber. Styly has been around the channel for a long time, and he commented on my uh, little LED light video. He said, "Doctor Prepare is pretty amazing for twenty-three dollars with up to seven hundred lumens." So before this comment, I had no idea that a Dr. Prepare light had even existed. So I got on Amazon and figured out that Dr. Prepare exists and it looks like it's a pretty legitimate slim LED flashlight or work light. So thank you Styly F, I'm going to uh, order one of these lights and we're gonna do a comparison. I'd like to do a side by side and just see, you know, uh, the differences. That might be a very cool tool under thirty dollars. So Jeff Hill put this uh, comment on my steel pruner uh, GTA 26 video, and he said the Milwaukee hatchet is a better design. So, ah, uh, I'm gonna go with. I don't think it's a better design. I think that it might be a, a little better because of the battery platform. But other than the battery platform and having that kind of technology already worked out, I think that is the only advantage that Milwaukee is going to have over the steel product in this realm. I think that the battery technology in the M12 is absolutely uh, evolving towards the top tier of what's capable. And I think that steel is just starting with that battery that they have and it is pri pri or it is proprietary to that tool so uh, you know if they had a better battery I'm sure that it could do more and last longer but I think steel takes the design home it just looks a lot cooler than the Milwaukee hatchet now that doesn't go to say that I won't be comparing them in the future all right, so I have no idea how uh, Waff Lufour, or however you say your username, he's been a longtime subscriber here around the channel, but I have no idea how you say his uh, actual username. He said, you mentioned the Astro Light. Care to do a direct comparison? Yes, I'm going to compare the, that slim LED light to the Doctor Prepare that Styly F had talked about, and then yes, I will buy the Astro as well, but you know, everything always costs money. So uh, probably in the near future, we will do that one. So this one is a nice long comment from Daniel Rice. I'm gonna sum it up with a nice video. I went with the Rigid Pro system, not a bad toolbox system. I'm a Milwaukee guy, but that's only because I bleed red. Uh, and that's why I did that. Now he said rigid is cheaper yet doesn't have some of the cool containers the Packout has. So I do like the rigid system a lot better than the DeWalt system. I would never buy the DeWalt tough system. Uh, I would definitely buy the rigid uh, you know directly after the Milwaukee but I, it, I decided to invest in the Milwaukee Packout and I've been absolutely happy so far. All right, John Doe says, what kind of work are you in? So John Doe, that's a great question. I am in facilities maintenance at this current time. So uh, I was in the Marine Corps and an aviation electrician. So my background is electronics and general maintenance, um, but I am now in the facilities maintenance realm and I do pretty much everything, jack of all trades on a daily basis. So. Uh, in charge of building infrastructure, HVAC, uh, plumbing, electrical, literally anything that you can think of that is uh, in a building, dust collection systems, garage door openers, uh, lighting, LED, uh, high bay lighting, uh, plumbing from toilets to urinals to sinks and blah, 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 blah. Pretty much take care of everything when it comes to the facility. So that is the line of work I'm in. I'm a jack of all trades here at the house and I love my job because it allows me to be a jack of all trades at work. All right guys, so next comment up is from Jim's1942. He's been a longtime subscriber as well. He said, uh, thanks for the update as far as the laces. The laces on the Rock Rooster uh, wedge sole boots, I was complaining about them keep coming untied or they kept coming untied. Um, he said, change them and put per nylon paracord in them for laces, they work great. I, also, I always do that first thing, cut it to length, melt the ends to prevent unraveling and then cut them uh, long enough to tie a square nut at the top 
or a square knot at the top after lacing them. So it stays tied all day long and uh, easy to untie when taking them off. So this is what we all did when I was in the service. So that's awesome idea there. Uh, actually Rock Rooster did send me a pair of different laces uh, in my second boot box. Um, I will be doing another review on a separate set of Rock Rooster boots soon. Uh, that's a great um, tip from you, Gems. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right, next comment up, Awan Qatar. He said, I thought you could drain the torque converter on the C300 by removing the drain bolt inside the bell housing. Great video, thanks. So. Uh, I was told by my service advisor at the dealer that the torque converter could not be, uh, the, the oil in the torque converter could not be changed um, or it didn't have a plug, I'm not sure. I never did investigate it. Um, I did exactly what the dealer would do. So the video that you watched and commented on is exactly how the dealer would have done the same service. So I have a very good relationship with my service advisor and he walked me through the process and after doing it a couple times, uh, it's really a piece of cake. Uh, as far as the two quarts of fluid, I mean, if you're keeping up with the service, that two quarts of fluid really isn't going to hurt you very much. Um, even dirty fluid after 40,000 miles really isn't that full of metal or really that degraded. So, I mean, I, I didn't notice any difference in shifting or, or how the transmission acted. So I think it's just fine if you were to keep a quart or two still in the system. It's hard to do a full drain every single time. All right, next comment is from Tim Nash says, are uh, use a reciprocating salt, or are you using a reciprocating salt to do all of your pruning? Do not need to go through all of this. Uh, do not need to worry about chains. Do not need to worry about oil. This is overkill, blah, 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 blah. Keep, uh, wow. Uh, do not need a helmet with a face mask and, and the earplugs with gloves. Okay, first of all, Tim, um, I wanted to tell you that the PPE that I wore in the video was a complete joke and it was just uh, basically for all those keyboard warriors that thought, hey, you need to wear your PPE. So we put on all the PPE for the steel pruner uh, uh, video. So. I would definitely say that a reciprocating saw like the M18 Fuel with a pruner blade will be a lot more effective and have a longer runtime because you do have higher amp hour batteries. That is a possibility, but somebody coming from not being invested in the M18 or 20 volt DeWalt line and just wanting a pruner for that specific reason, they have a very, very good chance of buying the steel GTA 26 pruner and getting the job done, uh, and that's all they need. All right, Colin Gomez, and my next one says, I just got a pair of NYX boots. Took five months, but they are very nice. Different world than these, but you should look into them. So thanks, Colin. I have looked into Whites and NYX. Uh, I think there's another company out there. Um, they're very pricey boots. Uh, I'm not really interested in a really tall leather boot. Um, I'm, I, that's what's really kept me away from it is usually most of those uh, custom boots are in 8, 10, and 12. You know, they're like more like logger, logger boots and stuff like that. And I'm just not that interested in them. So I might look into them in the future. If you have anything or a specific boot to, uh, to show me, please do send out a message or, uh, or email me and uh, let me know exactly what one that you're looking at. So final comment here, we're gonna go over today. Dennis said, finally some gloves that will last. So awesome that you feel that the uh, the Ranch Works gloves are just as good from Ironclad. Uh, I think they are one of the best best gloves all around for pretty much everybody that needs a glove. But you know, there are a lot of people out there that just buy one pair of gloves for a specific project and then they throw them away. And that's not how I run. So I really like a pair of gloves that I can use for all kinds of stuff, have that dexterity, but also have that durability in the end. So I want to thank you subscribers because there are a lot of people that are saying thank you and good job and I love the videos and I just, uh, you know, I get overwhelming feedback about how good the videos are. I continue to strive to bring you guys better content, um, better recording, uh, 
you know, quality. I want to make sure the lighting's good. Everything's good. I'm constantly evolving the channel and it's all thanks to you guys. I appreciate your support and the loyalty here on the channel. If you haven't clicked subscribed already and you're not one of my subscribers that I called out, well, I will get to you in the future. Continue those questions, keep them coming, and I will see you guys in the next video.